Hi, I am Aurel Enriquez, and this presentation contains our discussion on the lymphatic system and immunity. Listed here are the functions of the lymphatic system, but as previously mentioned in the title, we will be focusing on defense or the functions that has something to do with our immunity. This illustration right here shows us a general view of all the tissues and organs that is involved or that is included in the lymphatic system. As we have always done in our previous discussions, focus na lang po muna tayo dun sa mga statements na merong highlights. Next is lymph. So what is lymph? Lymph is a fluid that enters the lymphatic capillaries, which is composed of water and some solutes. Alright, so huwag natin kakalimutan na lymph is composed of water and solutes. So, ito daw po yung substance na dumadaan sa lymphatic vessels natin. The lymphatic capillaries would carry the lymph fluid in one direction from the tissues to the circulatory system. All right, so your lymphatic capillaries, no po, no, they um, collect the lymph fluid galing sa tissues, or dito dumadaan yung lymph fluid galing sa tissues papunta sa circulatory system. All right, not the other way around. So again, tulad na nabanggit dito, it only goes in one direction. So galing sa tissues to the circulatory system. All right, so lymphatic capillaries, they are closed-ended vessels. Mamaya may makikita rin po tayong illustration dito to help us understand anong ibig sabihin ng closed-ended vessels. Next, we have lymphatic vessels. So lymphatic vessels, they kind of look like small veins, all right, and they have one-way valves. Again, may illustration po mamaya. Para maintindihan po natin, anong ibig sabihin ng one-way valve. Next, we have the right lymphatic duct. So, the right lymphatic duct, this is where the lymphatic vessels from the right upper limb and right head, neck, and chest would empty. Alright, ulitin po natin, no? the right lymphatic duct. Alright, dito po, um, dito po manggagaling yung lymph fluid or dito dadaan yung lymph fluid galing sa right upper limb or yung right arm natin and also the right side of our head, neck, and chest. Alright, again, yung lymph fluid na nanggaling sa right upper limb, right side ng head, neck, and chest natin, dito mapupunta or dito dadaan sa right lymphatic duct. All right, this would eventually empty into the right subclavian vein. This illustration right here shows us a side-by-side -side comparison between an arteriole or a small artery, a venule or a small vein, and a lymphatic vessel. All right, so as we can see right here, we have this lymphatic vessel. So, ayan po. Again, um, when we say lymphatic vessels, no, they are a closed type of um, vessel. So, pag sinabi natin closed, i-compare natin na. I-compare po natin dito sa arteriole and sa venule na nakikita natin. These arterioles are open on one side and it continues to the other side. Di ba po? Open dito, tapos tuloy-tuloy hanggang sa kabilang side. But in comparison to these lymphatic vessels, open sila on one side, but notice these areas right here. They taper off and then they close. Alright? So, sarado na yung susunod na branch or yung susunod na segment nila. Alright? So, that's what we mean when we say that they are um, closed-ended. No? So, ayan po. Next, um, lymphatic vessels have also been described to have one-way valves. So, one-way valves meaning, again, isang direction lang po yung pwedeng pagdaan ng lymph fluid. Hindi pwedeng mag-regurgitate or mag-flow backwards yung lymph fluid na nakadaan. So, as you can see right here, um, this is what it looks like if the valves are closed and if the valves are opened.
Let's now talk about the different lymphatic organs. First up, we have the tonsils. All right. So, um, contrary to um, what people think, na meron tayong iisang tonsil lang. No, we actually have three different types of tonsils. All right. So first up is the palatine tonsil. So these ones could be found on each side of the oral cavity. Again, my picture po nito mamaya para mas maintindihan natin. But again, kapag sinabi pong palatine tonsils, they are on the sides of the oral cavity. Next is the pharyngeal tonsils. So these ones are located near the opening of the nasal cavity. All right? Again, pag sinabing pharyngeal, malapit siya sa nasal cavity. And last one is the lingual tonsils. So the lingual tonsils, they are at the posterior surface of the tongue. All right? So these three tonsils together, they would form kind of like a circular structure. So this would form a protective ring of lymphatic tissue around the nasal and oral cavities. So again, to better understand, let's look at the illustration on the next slide. This illustration right here shows us the locations of the three different tonsils. All right. Again, um, commonly known, no, ang commonly known lang na tonsil para sa atin is the pharyngeal tonsil or yung nandito, di ba? Yung parang may um, grape-shaped structure that is hanging from the roof of our mouth. But that's only one, all right? That's only one and that is referred to as the pharyngeal tonsil. Again, it's located right here and malapit din po siya sa um, opening ng nasal cavity natin. Next are the palatine tonsils. We have one on each side. Side. So here and this one right here. And the third one is the lingual tonsil. All right. So the lingual tonsil is near the base or at the back of the tongue, which is right here. So again, and po, meron silang, they form this kind of ring or circular area. All right. So again, we have three different types of tonsils, the pharyngeal, palatine, and lingual. Let's now talk about lymph nodes, all right? So lymph nodes, these are rounded structures that could vary in size. So pwede daw pong, um, some lymph nodes are larger than the others, some lymph nodes are smaller than others. They are located near lymphatic vessels. So usually po, there are some lymphatic vessels that would lead to a certain lymph nodes. So lymph nodes are usually located at the groin, armpit and neck area all right so the lymph would pass through the lymph nodes before entering the blood so basically um yung lymph fluid no yung lymph fluid po natin na nasa loob ng mga lymph vessels bago sila mag join dun sa circulation natin dadaan muna sila sa mga lymph nodes all right so again wag kakalimutan yung general location or yung three different locations where we would usually find lymph nodes so again it's at the groin or crotch area next are at the armpits and at the neck so isa rin po sa mga um, common observations na pwede nating um kumugis para mapansin no if you've ever gone to um, the doctor's office for a checkup or something tapos po kung halimbawa ang isang pasyente ang chief complaint niya is sore throat Diba? Um, when a person has a sore throat, isa sa mga bagay na chinecheck ng doktor is yung neck area ng pasyente. So, kung bagay is parang ipapalpate or kakapain ng doktor yung neck area or yung ibaba ng jawline ng pasyente para ma-check if enlarged ba yung lymph nodes ng pasyente dun sa lugar na yon. So, kapag enlarge yung lymph nodes ng pasyente dun sa area na yun, no, this could tell the physician that there might be some form of infection kasi nagkakaroon ng enlargement ng lymph nodes. So, po, that's one of the um, things that we may be able to observe that tells us that lymph nodes are present at the neck area. Kasi ayun nga po, isa to sa mga lugar na usually chinecheck ng mga doctors. Next, lymph fluid would move through and the immune system would be activated no, if foreign substances are detected. All right, ulitin po natin itong statement na to. So, the lymph fluid, no, dadaan sila sa mga lymph vessels, tapos dadaan sila dun sa mga lymph nodes natin. Now, if for example, 
may na-detect na foreign substance or kung halimbawa um, infectious microorganism no na na-detect yung lymph nodes natin then this would activate our immune system and with that lymphocytes would be produced now if you remember our discussion on the human blood di ba po lymphocytes are one of the five different types of WBCs or white blood cells that we have all right so ayan po um this would remove the microbes by the help of the macrophages. So, ayun po, um, basically, pag na-activate yung immune system natin through the detection of the foreign substances na dumaan sa lymph nodes natin, no, there are two different um, white blood cells that could begin their work. So, first up are the lymphocytes no, that would be triggered in terms of production. And next are the macrophages that are phagocytes. Diba? So, they would engulf or they would phagocytize the microbes that have been detected. Shown here is the general structure of a lymph node. So, ayan po, here are the different um, kind of like parts and um, structures that we may find inside of a lymph node. We're done with the lymph node. Let's now talk about the spleen. So the spleen, this is the size of a clenched fist. All right. So I info. Um, again, it may be approximately the same size as our heart. Diba po, if you would remember our discussion on the heart, um, yun din po yung description na ginamit, diba? Um, the heart is approximately the same size as your clenched fist. So, parang ganun din daw po yung size ng ating spleen. This one is located in the abdomen, okay? So, katabi ng spleen natin, lahat ng iba pang mga organs natin involved in the digestive system. So the spleen would filter the blood and it detects and responds to foreign substances. And again, let's focus on the highlighted parts right here. Isa sa mga pinakamahalagang pakinabang po ng spleen natin is that it would destroy old red blood cells. Alright, so kung halimbawa po, um, if you'd remember from our discussion on the human blood, diba, ang lifespan ng isang RBC ay gano'n lang po katagal? 120 days, diba? So, after na maka-120 days sa blood circulation ng RBC natin, no, pag dumaan ito sa spleen, madedetect ng spleen na old na itong RBC na to and they would begin to break down these old red blood cells. Alright? So, again, one of the most notable functions of our spleen is to filter blood and destroy old RBCs. Let's now talk about the parts of the spleen. We have the white pulp and the red pulp. So the white pulp is mostly composed of lymphatic tissues and some surrounding arteries. All right, ulitin natin. Ang component po ng white pulp is lymphatic tissues with a few arteries. Next, the red pulp. This one contains macrophages and red blood cells that would connect to the veins. All right, so it's quite easy to remember, diba? Red pulp contains some red blood cells. This slide right here shows us where our spleen is located. So again, it is located at the abdomen. So it is right next to um, all the other organs of our digestive system. All right, kalapit po no ng um, spleen natin yung iba pang mga organs natin nakasama sa digestive system then if we were we were to slice through our spleen we would be able to see that um, we have one splenic artery and one splenic vein that goes to the inside of our spleen next if we were to look further on the inside dito na po natin makikita yung white pulp which is right here again the white pulp is mostly composed of lymphatic tissues with some surrounding arteries. And then right here is the red pulp. So again, the red pulp um, is composed of some macrophages. And then there are red blood cells. And then um, it also kind of like connects to the splenic vein. All right. So again, um, it's quite easy to remember, no? Red pulp, where we may be able to find red blood cells. So that was for this spleen. Let's now talk about the thymus gland. So the thymus gland 
is a bilobed gland, all right? Bilobed meaning there are two lobes or there are kind of like two um two circular almost like circular structures that we may be able to observe. Makikita niyo po mamaya in the next illustration. But yeah, um, this one is located at the mediastinum behind the sternum. So our sternum, again, is our breastbone. Diba po? The sternum is the area in between our ribs that would kind of like connect our ribs and also um, protect our heart. Diba? Because our heart is right in between our two lungs. All right. So again, um, the thymus gland is located behind the sternum or the area um, approximately where our heart is also located. So basically, the thymus gland is also being protected by the sternum. All right. So this one would produce and um, mature lymphocytes. Okay. So ulitin po natin tong statement na to. Lymphocytes may be produced within the thymus gland, and lymphocytes could also mature within the thymus gland. All right, so this illustration right here shows us where our thymus is located. Again, assuming that our sternum is right here and our heart is in the middle, the thymus gland is right in front of that. All right, so nabangit kanina, diba, that the thymus is a bilobed gland. So look at this illustration right here. So this one is the first lobe, all right, and this next one, this larger one, is the second lobe all right so para siyang may dalawang areas or may dalawang portions so that's what it means when we say it is bilobed all right so if you were to look further and observe its microscopic anatomy ito po yung itsura ng thymus gland natin so again um uh, we have these two parts right here, the cortex and the medulla. Now, if you would remember from our previous discussions, no, iba pang mga organ systems na pag usapan natin in the past, you would know that usually when something is named cortex, it's on the outside, diba? And when something is named the medulla, it's in the middle. So that also applies to our thymus gland. There's an area known as the cortex and it is seen as kind of like an outer portion and there is a area known as the medulla which is in the middle or on the inside. So here's what we've discussed so far. We've talked about lymphatic capillaries, which are closed-ended. We've talked about lymphatic vessels, and then we've talked about lymph nodes, which are kind of like spherical structures that could vary in size. Next, we've talked about the spleen, the thymus, and ayun po, ito yung associations ng lahat ng mga organs na napag-usapan po natin in the previous slides. Let's now talk about immunity. Immunity is the ability to resist or prevent damage from foreign substances. So immunity can protect us against microbes or infectious microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, or fungi. And it could also protect us against toxins and cancer cells. So there are two types of immunity, innate immunity and adaptive immunity. So let's learn the difference between these two in the next few slides. Let's now talk about innate immunity. So innate immunity, these are our defense mechanisms that are present at birth. All right. So nung pinanganak daw po tayo, existent na or meron na tayo nitong mga immunity defense mechanisms na to. So these are defense against any pathogen. All right. Ang keyword po na wag natin kakalimutan dito is wala siyang specificity all right innate immunity does not have specificity all right so it could work it may or not it may or may not work no but it is trying to fight against any pathogen kahit anong klaseng um, pathogen pero ayun nga po walang specificity all right again innate immunity these are defense mechanisms that is present at birth and they could um, be our defense against any pathogen because it has no specificity all right so listed here are the different types of innate immunity so we have physical barriers such as our skin all right or our mucous membranes or um, the hair that is present on our skin that that could also act as a physical barrier all right so physical na harang laban sa mga 
possible pathogens that we could make contact with. Next are chemical mediators. Um, next are cells and inflammatory responses. So again, itong mga ito po, no, they are present at the birth. Pinanganak po tayo na nag-work na itong mga um, itong mga nabanggit na factors na ito. And again, they attempt to fight against any pathogen with no specificity. Physical barriers are also referred to as our first line of defense. Kasi ayun nga po, they are readily present. No? Nandiyan na sila agad. So again, examples of physical barriers would be our skin and our mucous membrane. So mucous membranes na mahanap natin sa nasal cavity, sa oral cavity natin, they act as barriers to pathogens and toxins. Um, another example of physical barriers would include our tears, saliva, and urine because they have the capability to wash away pathogens and toxins. All right, so yung flow daw po ng tears natin, um, yung presence ng saliva natin, and the urine that or the urine flow that is being produced as a person urinates. No, they have the capability to wash away some pathogens and some toxins. All right. So all of those are considered as physical barriers. And again, physical barriers are referred to as first line of defense. Next are chemical mediators. Chemical mediators are chemicals that can kill microbes and prevent their entry into the cells. Now, a lot of infectious pathogens out there, a lot of um, microorganisms that could cause diseases for humans, they first need to enter our cells, all right? Kailangan muna nila makapasok sa mga cells natin before they could start uh, multiplying or before they could cause any form of pathogenicity or yung mga signs and symptoms na ma-observe natin, all right? So again, we have chemical mediators to kill those microbes or prevent their entry para po hindi na matuloy yung process ng pagdudulot nila ng sakit. Listed here are some examples of chemical mediators. We have lysozyme. So lysozyme is found in tears and saliva to kill bacteria. All right. So kung baga po, um, if for example, napuwing tayo, no, there is a piece or there is a particle. Sorry, not piece. <laughs> A piece is too large. Um, if, for example, a particle of dust would get into our eyes. <laughs> See, if you if if now you understand this example, ma magigets nyo ang bakit ako natawa nung sinabi kong piece. Anyway, if a particle okay gets into our eyes, if a tiny particle of dust gets into our eyes, does that particle carries some bacteria? No, that could cause eye infections, di ba po? So our tears are present, para nga po, um, to kind of like, to kind of like expose the bacteria to lysozyme to kill that bacteria. Para ayun nga, hindi na ito magdulot ng sakit sa atin. And same for our saliva, no? We may accidentally sometimes ingest food items that may still contain some bacteria that could cause gastrointestinal diseases. So at least our saliva has lysozymes to eliminate or kill off some of those bacteria para pagdating sa digestive tract natin, hindi na sila magdudulot ng sakit. Next are mucous membranes. So mucous membranes, um, nabanggit natin kanina, di ba? They're also considered as a physical barrier. So um, right now, we're learning na kasama rin sila sa chemical mediators. So mucous membranes could prevent the entry of microbes. Listed here are other examples of chemical mediators. We have histamine. Histamine promotes inflammation by causing vasodilation. So again, um, when we say vasodilation, this is the dilation of our blood vessels or the expanding or opening up of the diameter of our blood vessels. So that would increase blood flow, diba? Right? So when blood flow increases, that would also kind of like um kind of like increase the amount of white blood cells that could pass through that area. Next, 
we also have interferons. So interferons, these are proteins that protect against viral infections by stimulating surrounding cells to produce antiviral proteins. All right. So ang keywords natin dito ay viruses. All right. So kapag sinabing interfer interferons, all right, interferons are proteins against viral infections. So basically. Yung mga interference po, kumbaga is parang i-stimulate or encourage nila yung mga cells sa paligid or yung mga cells dun sa vicinity kung saan nila na-detect yung virus to produce antiviral proteins or proteins that could work against the virus that has been detected. Alright, so again, keyword natin, interference is against viruses. Let's now talk about the cells of our immune system, all right? So, um, the cells of our immune system are primarily composed of our white blood cells, right? I've already mentioned this on our previous discussion on the human blood, all right? So, ayan po, cells of the immune system, this is um, primarily composed of our white blood cells. So, they are produced in the red bone marrow and lymphatic tissues, alright? So, may dalawang places daw po kung saan pwedeng maproduce ang mga white blood cells, either sa red bone marrow or sa lymphatic tissues, alright? So, they have the capability to fight off foreign substances. Now, we have the term phagocytic cells. So, when we say phagocytic cells, they are capable of phagocytizing or ingesting foreign substances, and once they have ingested these uh, foreign substances, then that's the time they would be able to destroy these foreign materials, all right? So examples of phagocytic cells are neutrophils and macrophages, all right? So wag po natin kakalimutan yung dalawang examples of phagocytic cells, the neutrophils and macrophages. Let's now talk about each one of the different white blood cells, all right? So first up are neutrophils. So neutrophils, they are the first to respond to infections, but they die very quickly, all right? So ulitin po natin yun. Um, yung mga neutrophils po, no, they're the first ones to detect a pathogen. They're the first ones to fight off um, a pathogen or infection, but ayun nga po, they die quite easily after they fight off or after they do their job, all right? So, this is another thing that's kind of like um, not not very accurate kung napanood niya na po yung anime na Cells at Work, di ba? Kasi yung bida na neutrophil, parang sobrang dami niya ng episodes na natapos, but he's still not dead. Pero ayun po, in real life, no, in real life, um, although, ayun nga, ang accurate naman na part dun sa cells at work is that, tama, no, siya yung laging unang nakakadetect ng danger, siya yung laging unang nakakadetect ng bagong infection, siya yung nauuna sa mga fights and all that stuff. Pero ayun nga, ang hindi accurate is, ang tagal na niyang buhay, ang dami niya ng episodes na nandun. Alright? But in real life, no, neutrophils, um, yes, they are the first ones to detect an infection or to respond to an infection, but they die quickly. Next are eosinophils. So these ones are produced specifically in the red bone marrow, and they re release chemicals to reduce inflammation. Alright, so ayan po. Eosinophils, um, hindi nakalagay dito, no? Um, nakalagay lang dito is that they release chemicals to reduce inflammation. But if you would remember from our previous discussion on the human blood, um, isa rin sa mga main functions or ang pinakakilala na trabaho ng mga eosinophils is to fight against parasitic infections, di ba? So, when a person is suffering from a parasitic infection, there is an increased number of eosinophils. Okay? So, ayan. So, ayan po. Huwag natin kakalimutan yung dalawang functions ng eosinophils. Number one, to fight against parasitic infections. And number two, is to reduce inflammation. Next are basophils. So, basophils are also made in the red bone marrow. And ito po yung mahalaga kailangan natin tandaan. They release histamine. Alright? So, if you would remember from the previous slides, diba? a few slides ago, we learned, no, we found out that histamine promotes inflammation. Alright? Histamine promotes inflammation and also vasodilation. Now, if you would notice, magkakontra po yung trabaho ng eosinophils versus basophils. Diba? 
if basophils would produce histamine to increase inflammation, all right, or to induce inflammation, eosinophils are there to produce chemicals that would reduce all right, or lower inflammation. Okay, so basically, um, they have kind of like contradicting functions or contradicting for purposes. Kasi, ayun nga po, um, of course, we need to kind of like come into some form of balance, di ba? Hindi naman pwedeng patuloy lang na um, nagkakaroon ng inflammation, di ba? Because excessive inflammation is also not good. So we also need cells that would produce things that could stop the inflammation. Alright, so ayan po. But again, um, keep in mind that the main function of basophils is to release histamine that could induce inflammation. Next are macrophages. So macrophages were initially monocytes. Alright, so based off from this statement, alright, mula lang sa statement na to, basically sinasabi sa atin, no, that macrophages originated from monocytes, alright? Naging monocyte daw muna sila bago sila naging macrophage. But in a lot of references, and um, you may be able to kind of like hear in a lot of other discussions, no, na ginagamit na interchangeably itong dalawang terms na to, alright? But if you need, or if you um, want a bit more specificity, no, you want to be a bit more specific in terms of their um, kind of like sequence, no, um, again, it's saying right here, no, that monocytes, no, were the first kind of like types of cell, or they were first called monocytes bago sila naging macrophages, all right? But again, in a lot of discussions and a lot of references, they are being used interchangeably, all right? So macrophages can ingest more than neutrophils, all right? Ulitin natin, dalawang examples po na naibigay kanina, no, dalawang examples ng um, phagocytes, all right, cells that are capable of phagocytosis are neutrophils and macrophages. Pero sinasabi po dito that macrophages are capable of ingesting more things in comparison to neutrophils. Why do you think is this the case? It's because macrophages are obviously larger than neutrophils. Diba po? Again, if you would go back to our discussion on the human blood, um, naipakita po natin no, yung different morphologies of neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, lymphocytes, and macrophages. And again, among the five different white blood cells, the macrophages are the largest among all of them. All right? So it makes sense no, that macrophages are capable of ingesting more things compared to neutrophils. Oh, another important thing that um, is mentioned here is that nag-iiba iba rin daw po yung tawag sa mga macrophages depending on their location. All right, so one example that was shown here is that um, the macrophages of our liver are referred to as the copper cells. Okay, ulitin po natin. No? Um, specific names are given to macrophages depending on which area of the body they may be found. All right? For example, in the liver, macrophages are referred to as copper cells. Up next are mast cells. Okay, so mast cells, they are also made in the red bone marrow, and listed here are all the places where they could be found. Okay, so again, wag po natin kakalimutan yung mga places kung saan pwede tayo makahanap ng mast cells. So mast cells are found in the skin, lungs, gastrointestinal tract, and urogenital tract, or you, um, urinary and genital tract of a person. All right. So again, magkakalimutan yung areas where we could find mast cells. Next are natural killer cells. These are a type of lymphocyte. Okay. So ayan po. Um, lymphocytes, no, could um, further mature or further evolve into different types of cells. All right. So lymphocytes could evolve into NK cells or natural killer cells. All right. So they recognize classes of cells such as tumor cells or virus infected cells. Okay? So ito po yung mahalagang kailangan nating tandaan dito. Ang mga natural killer cells, they work against tumor cells and virus infected cells. All right? Again, ang mga natural killer cells, sila ay isang uri ng lymphocyte. Ang mga kinakalaban po nila ay yung mga tumor cells and virus infected 
infected cells, mga cells na na-invade na or na-infect na ng mga viruses. Let's now talk about inflammatory response. So this involves chemicals and cells produced due to injury. All right. So again, ang first step muna po bago magkaroon ng inflammation is magkakaroon muna dapat ng injury. All right. So hindi basta basta nagkakaroon ng inflammation for no reason. All right. There needs to first there there first needs to be an injury. All right. So this one is signaled by the presence of a foreign substance. So maliban sa injury, ano pa yung mga bagay that could lead to an inflammation? The presence of foreign substances. All right. Whether this be a a microbial pathogen or maybe a a transplant, no, an organ transplant, na rin reject no um no recipient. This could also be considered as a foreign substance and could also lead to some form of inflammation. All right. So next, this would stimulate the release of chemical mediators. All right. So ulitin po natin, no? Ano yung dalawang reasons as to why inflammation could happen? Either merong injury or merong foreign substance. So, pag merong injury or merong foreign substance, what would happen next? There would be a release or production of chemical mediators. So, yung mga nabanggit natin kanina, di ba? Tulad ng histamine. Di ba? Histamine um, induces or kind of like encourages inflammation, right? So, let's now talk about adaptive immunity. Um, <laughs> Ang dami na natin na pag-usapan, innate immunity pa lang yun, no? So, ayan po. Let's now proceed to adaptive immunity. So, adaptive immunity is a defense that involves specific recognition of a specific antigen. Now, if you would remember, ano pong sinabi ko kanina about innate immunity? It is non-specific, alright? It has no specificity, alright? So, again, yun yung keywords natin dito, di ba? Innate, non-specific. Adaptive, specific, all right? So, adaptive immunity is acquired after birth, di ba? So, again, ikumpara po natin sa innate immunity. No? Ang adaptive immunity po, no? adaptive immunity, this only happens or this is only developed after birth. Kasi after nating maipanganak, dun pa lang po tayo may expose sa iba't ibang klaseng pathogenic organisms, sa iba't ibang mga infectious materials or toxic substances, di ba? So, again, um, adaptive immunity is only developed after birth. Hindi katulad ng innate immunity. Sa innate immunity, di ba? These are things that are present at birth. No? They're readily available, like our skin and mucous membranes. We don't have to generate or make that anymore, di ba? We were born with those. Pero dito po sa adaptive immunity, kailangan may ma-encounter muna tayo na infectious organism bago mag-develop yung adaptive immunity natin. Alright? So, next, they're also slower in comparison to innate immunity. Again, why would that be? Because, again, kung ikukumpara natin sa innate immunity, our innate um, immune responses are already there. They're already present. So, syempre, as expected, mas mabilis yung pagtatrabaho ng innate immune response natin. Now, if we were to compare that with adaptive immunity, kailangan may ma-encounter ma muna siya na um, antigen or may encounter muna siya na infectious organism bago pa siya makapag-develop ng response to that. So again, um, the adaptive immunity is a bit slower in comparison to innate immunity. Um, ang comparison though, no, the good thing about this is that adaptive immunity has memory. We'll talk more about that later. Um, let's first look into the different types of cells that is employed, no? the different types of cells that would usually work in terms of our adaptive immunity. So dito po, ang primary cells ng trabaho are our lymphocytes, specifically the B cells and T cells. Alright, may isa pang uri ng lymphocyte tayong nabanggit kanina, di ba? It's the natural killer cells. And again, the natural killer cells, ano po ang primary targets nila? Tumor cells and virus-infected cells. So again, natural killer cells are also a type of lymphocytes, pero natural killer cells, they're mostly involved in 
innate immunity. Dito, andito na po tayo sa adaptive immunity. Sa adaptive immunity, ang types of lymphocytes na nagtatrabaho dito ay yung mga B cells and T cells. We'll talk more about them later. Now, um, adaptive immunity also has two types. All right? May dalawang uri pa daw po ng adaptive immunity. Antibody mediated and cell mediated. Again, that's something that we'll talk more about later. Definition of terms muna po tayo. Here are terms related to adaptive immunity. First up, what is an antigen? All right? So an antigen is a substance that stimulates an immune response. So basically, um, these are structures na makakatrigger sa immune system natin to respond. All right? So examples of these no, are um, bacteria, viruses, pollen for people with um, pollen allergies, um, food. So there are people out there with food allergies and drugs. Again, there are some people out there that are allergic to some drugs. But for most people, no, kahit wala kang allergies, it's the bacteria and viruses that have antigens that could cause our immune system to respond. Next are self-antigens, all right? So what are self-antigens? These are molecules that are produced by the person's body that stimulates an immune system response. So basically, these are um, things na nanggaling sa sarili mo na nire-recognize ng immune system mo as an enemy, all right? So um, these are things from your own, no? from yourself, that is being um, recognized by the immune system as a threat. In turn, kakalabanin ng immune system mo yung sarili mo, which is not a good outcome. Next is an antibody. So antibodies are proteins that the body produces in response to an antigen. All right? So ulitin natin yung scenario na to. Um, a person encounters a bacteria. All right? So the bacteria has an antigen. Ngayon, matitrigger yung immune response natin. Now, once our adaptive immunity would kick in, no, kapag na-start up na yung adaptive immunity natin, this would now create antibodies. So antibodies, again, these are proteins that are being produced in response to a specific antigen. Let's now talk about where lymphocytes would come from. So lymphocytes come from stem cells. So all stem cells are present in the bone marrow. All right, ang mga stem cells daw po ay matatagpuan sa ating red bone marrow. Now, um, stem cells give rise to all blood cells. Again, i-rewind po natin dun sa discussion natin on the human blood. If you would remember that illustration kung saan we have one stem cell population and then pwede siyang maging or pwede siyang mag-differentiate either as a myeloid or as a lymphoid, di ba? So if it takes the route of being a lymphoid, it would eventually mature into a lymphocyte, all right? So this would give rise to some pre-T cells or pre B cells, all right? So these as the name implies, no, these are the types of cells that would eventually become B cells or T cells. So, ito yung mga types of cells na sila muna yung initial structure bago maging isang mature T cell or maging mature B cell. Alright? Again, um, if you already forgot, no, go back and watch our discussion on the human blood. Alright? So, it, all our blood cells, no, all of our blood cells would start off from a um, stem cell population, from this one stem cell population and then we differentiate siya either into a myeloid or a lymphoid pag lymphoid yung pinili niya yun yung magcreate ng mga lymphocytes let's now proceed into the more specific discussion on lymphocytes so lymphocytes are a type of white blood cell no we've already learned about this in our previous discussions kasama siya dun sa five different types of white blood cells and lymphocytes are involved in adaptive immunity all right ulitin natin ang lymphocytes po ay nagtatrabaho lamang kapag may kinalaman na ito sa adaptive immune response and they could differentiate into specific lymphocytes such as B cells or T cells. So on the following slides, alamin natin ano nga bang pinagkaiba ng B or T cells. B cells are involved in antibody mediated immunity. So na magit natin kanina, di ba? There are two types of adaptive immunity: yung antibody mediated and yung cell 
mediated. So we're now learning that yung B cells, they are involved in the antibody mediated immunity. All right. So the B cells, they mature in the red bone marrow. All right. So that's one of the things that could help you remember no? um, the facts about B cells. Again, B cells, saan sila nagmamature? Sa red bone marrow. Okay. So they mature in the red bone marrow and they lead to the production of antibodies. So again, um, all of the facts that ha uh, we have highlighted right here, no, they all co correlate. All right. They all correlate. So B cells, they mature at the bone marrow. They are involved in antibody mediated immunity by producing antibodies or yung mga protein that are produced in response to an antigen. Next are T cells. So T cells are involved in cell mediated immunity. Okay? So a side by side comparison natin sila yung B cells involved sa antibody mediated. Yung T cells involved in cell mediated immunity. Next, tulad na nabanggit kanina, nasaan nagmamature ang mga B cells? Sa bone marrow. Diba? Ang mga T cells, saan po sila nagmamature? Sa thymus gland. Alright? So, again, it's quite easy to remember. Yung letters, no? Yung letters na, yung letters sa simula nila, no? That's usually, or that usually denotes where they matured. So, again, B cells, they matured in the bone marrow. T cells, they matured in the thymus gland. This illustration shows us the origin of B cells and T cells and kung saan sila pupunta after they mature. So again, um, both B and T cells magsisimula sila sa red bone marrow. Diba? Kasi nasa red bone marrow yung stem cell nila. So the stem cell would evolve or would um, differentiate into a lymphoid cell. And then yung lymphoid cell, magbamature siya into a lymphocyte. So again, there are two types of lymphocytes, yung T cells and yung B cells. Now yung mga B cells, no, they would mature dito na lang sa bone marrow. Hindi na sila aalis dito in the meantime. Yung mga T cells naman, aalis sila, no, um, they would kind of like pass through the general circulation and move to the thymus. Pagdating ng thymus, dun sila magmamature. Alright? So, kaya sila tinawag na T-cell dahil sa thymus pa sila nag-grow up. Now, after that, after magmature parehas nung B-cell na nasa bone marrow and yung T-cell na nasa thymus, um, eventually, they would have to also um, exit no, from their houses. Alright? Lalabas na sila sa kanya-kanya nilang mga bahay and they would enter the general circulation. Alright? And after that, they would move into our lymph nodes. Alright? So, pagdating sa lymph nodes, no, magkakasama or halo-halo na po dito yung mga B cells and T cells. Alright? So, again, um, both um, B cells and T cells would originate from our um, red bone marrow. Or specifically, no, if you would like to be more specific, yung pre-T cell and pre-B cell muna, no, yung mag-originate dito sa bone marrow. And then, if they are going to be a B cell, then dito na rin sila magmamature sa bone marrow. Meanwhile, kung T cell naman, um, itong lymphocyte na to, kikilos pa siya or move out pa siya papunta sa thymus. After that, kapag parehas na silang matured, no, they would eventually move into the um, systemic circulation and then pupunta sila sa mga lymph nodes. And then they could begin doing their jobs and defending us against infections. Let's now proceed with antigen recognition. Alright, so paano daw na-recognize ng mga Lymphocytes natin, paano na recognize ng immune system natin yung mga antigens? Paano na recognize yung kalaban? Alright? So, lymphocytes, they have antigen receptors on their surface. Alright? So, sa surface or sa ibabaw daw po ng mga lymphocytes, meron silang receptors to specific antigens. Alright? So, um, B cell receptors are found on B cells and T cell receptors are found on T cells. Now, each receptor would only bind to a specific antigen, all right? So, 
Um, do you guys remember our discussion on the endocrine system where I talked about the lock and key model? The main lock and key model, um, it's basically telling us no, that um, a certain lock or a specific lock could only be opened by a specific key. Diba? And for the um, discussion ng endocrine system, I mentioned there that certain hormones would only be able to work on certain tissues if they have the matching receptor for that. Remember that? All right. If you already forgot about that, pakibalikan na lang po yung discussion natin on the endocrine system. But that's kind of like the same concept with antigen recognition. Again, imagine the lock and key model. Specific antigen receptors would only be able to bind or recognize specific antigens. Hindi po mangyayari na magkakaibang antigens, magkakaibang pathogens, e nare-recognize ng the same or parehas na B cell or T cell. Okay? Meron tayo dito specificity. Alright? So, magkakalimutan yung keyword natin kapag ang pinag-uusapan ay adaptive immune system. We have specificity. So, ganun din po with regards to antigen recognition. So, our lymphocytes are only capable of recognizing specific antigens depending on their specific receptors. All right. So, when the antigen receptors combine with the antigen, so in short, nag-match yung structure ng antigen receptor with the actual antigen, no? the lymphocyte is activated and the adaptive immunity would begin. All right. So, basically, again, bringing it back to the lock and key example, kapag nag-match daw po yung structure no receptor doon sa antigen, no? Kung bagay, is parang magbubukas yung pinto, no? Magbubukas yung padlock. So, um, the lymphocyte would be activated and the adaptive immune response would now be started or it would kind of like be given a start up. This slide would begin our discussion on antibody-mediated immunity. So, antibody-mediated immunity is effective against bacteria, viruses, and toxins. Right? So, ulitin natin, antibody-mediated immunity is effective against bacteria, viruses, and toxins. So, it uses B cells to produce antibodies. We already mentioned this earlier, diba? So, mga B cells po, they produce antibodies. Let's now talk about the structure of antibodies. So this slide right here is telling us that antibodies are letter Y in terms of their shape. All right, they're shaped like the letter Y. Now we have what is known as the variable region. Now this bullet right here might sound a bit confusing because it's saying that the variable region is the V of the Y. But Literally, if you would look at this illustration right here that I made, um, the variable region is this top portion right here. So, tama nga naman yung description niya, no? Siya yung letter V dun sa letter Y in a structure. Alright, so I hope you understood that by looking at this illustration right here. Anyway, again, the variable region, this would bind to the epitopes of the antigen using the antigen binding site. Right? Anong ibig sabihin ng statement na to? Um, yung variable region daw po, siya yung kumakapit or siya yung dumidikit dun sa mga antigens. Alright? So, ulitin natin, the antibody structure is shaped like a letter Y. The top portion is referred to as the variable region. So, the variable region, this is the area no, that would bind to antigens using their antigen binding sites, which could be found right here at the tips of the letter V. Next, we have what is known as the constant region. So, yung constant region po, that is the stem of the letter Y or this lower segment right here. Alright? So, yung nandito daw po sa ibaba, yan yung constant region. Alright? So, each class of immunoglobulin has the same structure. Mamaya po mapag-uusapan natin ano ba yung iba't ibang classes of immunoglobulins. Basically, ang kailangan lang natin tandaan dito is that bawat magkakaparehas na class ng immunoglobulin, magkakaparehas sila ng constant region. Alright? So, ang nagbabago-bago lang po palagi is yung variable region. Which again, it's a bit easy to remember, di ba? Variable Variable region. There are many varieties. 
this illustration right here shows us a better picture, you know, a better example of the antibody structure. So, nagdrawing lang po ako kanina kasi, um, again, wala tayong naka-insert na picture doon. But in this next slide, eh, nakikita na po natin yung um, more accurate representation of the antibody structure. Again, this top V-shaped structure right here is the variable region and maaaring mag-iba-iba yung components and yung structure nito depending on the antigen that it is currently targeting. All right. So um, the very tips of these variable regions, dito po yung antigen binding site. Pag sinabing antigen binding site, ito yung portion ng antibody na dumidikit doon sa antigen, nagbabind doon sa antigen. And this segment right here is the constant region. So again, yung constant region, this is the same for each class of antibodies. Let's now talk about the different classes of immunoglobulins. So there are five, IgG or immunoglobulin G, immunoglobulin M, IgA, IgE, and IgD. So in the next slide, tignan po natin kung ano ang itsura nila. These illustrations right here shows us the different antibody structures depending on their classes. So yung mga IgG, IgE and IgD, um, silang tatlo po, no, sinusunod nila yung usual na letter Y shaped structure ng mga antibodies, alright? So, meron silang tingi isang letter Y, alright? Dito naman, for IgM and IgA, they're a bit special because they are composed of multiple Y shaped structures. So, for IgM, it is composed of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all right, five letter Y shaped structures. So it is referred to as a pentameric structure. All right, pentameric structure. IgM is composed of a pentameric structure. Next, ang IgA naman, as we can see right here, it is composed of one, two letter Y shaped structures. So this one is a dimeric structure. All right, so IgA is a dimeric structure. Let's now talk about each one of them. First up is immunoglobulin G or IgG. So this could be found at 80 to 85% in the serum. So medyo madami sila, no? Madami sila in comparison to all the other antibodies. This would activate complement and increase phagocytosis, all right? So ang IgG daw po, tumutulong siya to increase the capability of phagocytic cells to perform phagocytosis. Another um, notable characteristic of IgG is that it can cross the placenta and it could provide protection to the fetus. All right, so this is something that hindi kayang gawin ng ibang mga antibody classes. All right, so again, this is a unique feature only for IgG. IgG can cross the placenta. Next is IgM. So, medyo mababa na lang yung percentage nito. No? Konti lang sila. 5 to 10% in the serum. Alright? So, this is of often the first antibody that is being produced in response to the antigen. Okay? So, anong ibig sabihin ng statement na to? Um, when we first encounter an infectious organism, ang unang antibody daw po na napoproduce is IgM muna. Okay? And then eventually, um, if there would be succeeding exposures, tsaka lang daw po mapoproduce ang IgG. Okay? So, ayun po. Um, one of the kind of like things that um, I don't remember. Pero um, I think we learned this dun sa review center na po namin. No? Paano namin matatandaan, no? Um, na unang na-produce yung IgM bago magkaroon ng IgG. Um, M daw po stands for maaga. Alright? So, again, IG, IgM is the first antibody to be produced. So, kapag na-encounter yung isang infectious organism, maaga yung pag-produce ng IgM. Alright? Tapos, um, late na daw yung pagdating ng IgG. No? So, dadating daw po yung IgG gabi na. Alright? So, it's kind of funny. It's very non-scientific, you know. It, it doesn't really correlate no, to the timing kung kailan nakikate ang mga um, immunoglobulins. Pero ayun po, um, kumbaga is parang reminder lang or parang mnemonic lang para matandaan natin kung kailan 
um, na produce ang mga antibodies or alin yung unang na produce among the antibodies all right so baka ma- ma- malito po kayo ulitin natin yung statement na yon um, when we first encounter an infectious pathogen ang unang mapo-produce ay IgM okay so maaga siyang na produce next um, after some sub- subsequent exposures tsaka lang produce yung IgG Okay? But then again, wag po kakalimutan, mas marami pa rin sa serum natin yung IgG. Um, there is very abundant amounts of immunoglobulin G in our serum. Alright? So, ayun po, wag kakalimutan yung mga notable characteristics among the antibodies. For IgG, ang notable characteristics sa kanya is that it can cross the placenta. For IgM, ang notable characteristic para sa kanya is that it is the first antibody to be produced. Next is immunoglobulin A or IgA. There's about 15% of this in our serum, and we usually find this secreted into the saliva, tears, and mucous membranes. All right, so um, medyo familiar, no? Yung tatlong to, saliva, tears, and mucous membranes. So, um, ang saliva, tears, and mucous membranes natin na classify sila as a part of our innate immunity. Diba? As a physical barrier, right? So, ayun po, within our physical barriers, meron din po tayo mga antibodies dun, specifically immunoglobulin A or IgA, right? So, ayun po, it protects body surfaces, alright? So, ayun po, um, again, wag natin kakalimutan, no? IgG can cross the placenta, IgM, the first one to be produced, and IgA, present in saliva, tears, and mucous membranes. Um, another um, thing, no, another fact about IgA is that this could be found in colostrum and milk to provide immune protection to the newborn. So, as a newborn is breastfeeding from the mother, maaari daw siya makapag-acquire ng IgA ng mother galing sa milk that the newborn is ingesting. So ayan, basically nadagdagan, sorry, nadagdagan po yung places kung saan pwede nating mahanap yung IgA. Saliva, tears, mucous membranes, and colostrum within the milk. Next is IgE. So as we can see right here, sobrang konti lang ng IgE natin, no? It's at about 0.002 percent in our serum. Alright? Sobrang konti lang. So, this one, the IgE, they can bind to mast cells and basophils to stimulate inflammatory response. Alright? So, again, um, ang mga keywords natin dito, IgE, it can bind to basophils to encourage immune response. Next is immunoglobulin D or Ig. D. Alright? So, um, simple lang po yung kailangan nating tandaan dito. This acts as an antigen binding receptor on B cells. Alright? So, saan tayo makahanap ng IgD? Sa mga B cells. Listed here are the different effects of antibodies. Alright? So, kapag na-produce na yung mga antibodies and they're on their way to binding to their... Um, specific antigens, ano mangyayari after that? First up, they could inactivate the antigen. Alright? So, kung ano man yung pathogenic um, activities na kayang gawin ng isang um, antigen or isang infectious organism, kaya itong i-inhibit or i-inactivate ng mga antibodies. Next, they can also bind the antigens together. So, kaya niyang pagdikit-dikitin yung mga antigens. Next, they could activate complement cascades. Um, hindi muna natin ini-discuss no in detail yung complement cascade kasi po this is already an advanced immunology topic. So you would learn more about this pagdating niyo po sa third year classes niyo in immunology. Next, antibodies could initiate the release of inflammatory chemicals. So antibodies could also work to encourage inflammation. And of course, they could facilitate phagocytosis. So nakakatulong din daw po yung mga antibodies para sa mga cells and they could help them um, speed up the process of phagocytosis. Let's now talk about antibody production. So first, we have the primary 
response. So primary, this is the first exposure of a B cell to an antigen. All right. So ito daw po yung unang basis na ma-encounter ng B cells natin, itong pathogenic organism na to or kung ano man itong substance na merong antigen. All right. First exposure, first encounter, unang basis niya na ma-meet or makilala itong antigen na to. So the B cell would now undergo division and forms plasma cell and memory cells. Alright? So, ulitin natin, pag na-encounter na nung B cell, yung antigen, for the first time, no, magde-divide siya and it would form one plasma cell and memory cells. Alright? So, with that, ano, ma, ano po ba ang pakinabang ng mga plasma cells? Alright? So, plasma cells, these are the specific types of B cells that produce antibodies. Alright? So, kanina pinag-usapan natin, di ba, yung trabaho or yung pakinabang ng mga B cells at T cells. Alright? So, nalaman natin kanina that it's the B cells that produces antibodies. But now, we are learning, no, na ang specific type pala ng B cell that produces antibodies are the plasma cells. Kumbaga, nag-evolve pa siya further for it to be able to produce plasma cells. Alright? So, they produce antibodies and then um, 3 to 14 days to produce enough antibody to be effective against an antigen. So, ayun po, isa rin sa mga dahilan no, kung bakit sinabi na slow-acting yung adaptive immunity. Kasi tignan nyo po itong statement na to. 3 hanggang 14 days, 2 weeks pa daw po bago makapag-produce ng sapat na antibody ang isang plasma cell para maging effective, para malabanan niya ang isang antigen. So, that's quite a long time. Next are memory cells. So, memory cells, again, this is a type of um, B cell and it occurs when the immune system is exposed to antigens that has been seen before. Alright, so, ayun, literal, no? The memory cells would remember antigens that that it has encountered in the past all right so memory b cells they um quickly divide to form plasma cells which would produce antibodies and they could also produce new memory cells so that entire discussion was only about antibody mediated immunity again um ang dami na po natin na pag-usapan pero antibody mediated immunity pa lang yun let's now proceed to cell mediated immunity so cell mediated immunity this is used against antigens in cells and tissues all right so may mga antigens daw po no na maaring natatagpuan nila sa loob ng mga cells or sa mismong mga tissues all right not on the outside this is not an antigen that they just encountered on the outside naka-incorporate na daw po sa mga cells and tissues itong mga antigens na to all right so ayan po this is effective against intracellular bacteria viruses fungi and protozoa all right so there are infectious organisms out there that are referred to as intracellular meaning required no required para sa kanila na pumasok muna sa loob ng isang cell to be able to um, acquire nutrients multiply cause pathogenicity and all those other stuff all right. So again, um, this is something na sa third year classes nyo in your microbiology one nyo naman po matututuhan. All right. In your microbiology one classes, you would learn that we have what is known as obligate intracellular pathogens. All right. So there may be bacteria, viruses, and fungi, and some protozoa na ayun nga, requirement nila na makapasok muna sila sa loob ng host cell bago makapag-proceed with... Um, with kind of like doing what they need to do to produce pathogenicity, right? So, dito na po magtatrabaho ang cell-mediated immunity natin. And ang main character, no, ang main character po ng cell-mediated immunity natin are the T cells, right? So, kung kanina sa antibody-mediated immunity, ang main character ay yung B cells, dito sa cell-mediated immunity, ang main character ay T cells. Um, ulitin natin, no, just a, just a recap. Um, saan nga po ulit nagmamature ang mga B cells? Sa bone marrow, ba? Sa red bone marrow. They are produced and they mature within the red bone marrow. So, that is for the B cells. Next, ang mga T cells po, saan po sila nagmamature? 
it's a thymus, all right? So again, um, the T-cells, no, or the pre-T-cells, they are produced also in the red bone marrow. Pero they move out and they mature or they grow up in the thymus. Kaya sila tinawag na T-cells. Okay, so that's just a quick recap of some of the things that we mentioned earlier. Let's now talk about the different types of T-cells. We have helper T-cells, all right? Helper T-cells, they activate macrophages. So literally, no, tinutulungan nila yung macrophages to do their job, to be activated and do their job, all right? So again, those are helper T-cells. Next are cytotoxic T-cells. Right, cytotoxic T cells, they are the precursor to cytotoxic T lymphocytes or CTL. All right, so again, we have what is known as CTLs or yung mga cytotoxic T lymphocytes. Pero bago sila maging CTL, naging muna sila cytotoxic T cells. Next, so ano naman po yung mga cytotoxic T lymphocytes or CTLs? They destroy antigen on contact. So may capability daw sila no, na sirain yung structure ng mga antigens as soon as they bind to the antigen. Alright, so literally they are cytotoxic. They are toxic to the cells with the antigen that they match with. Next are regulatory T cells. So they turn off the immune system when the response or immune system responds when the antigen is gone. All right. So um, again, it's a normal process of achieving homeostasis. So basically, kung na balance out na, no, kung na eliminate na yung mga antigens, then it makes sense na itigil na rin, no? yung cytotoxicity or itigil na rin yung pagtatrabaho ng immune system, alright? Pwede nang magpahinga sandali yung immune system. So, trabaho po yun ng mga regulatory T cells, no? To turn off or kind of like um, tell the immune system to kind of like stop with the reaction because the antigen has been eliminated, alright? So, the, el the enemy has been eliminated, this illustration right here shows us the stimulation and effects of T cells, or basically the evolution and the work of T cells. All right. So first up, no, an activation of a cytotoxic T cell by the antigen on the cell surface would happen, as we can see right here. So pag na activate po yung T cell, all right. Again, ulitin natin, no, paano na activate ang mga T cells when their antigen receptor binds to a specific antigen, all right? Again, remember the lock and key concept. Kapag nag-match yung receptor nila sa isang antigen, tsaka sila ma-activate. So now, once they become activated, some of them would become memory T cells, and then some of them would become cytotoxic T cells. Now, some of the cytotoxic T cells, they could release cytokines, all right? So these are chemicals that could either produce inflammation or help with phagocytosis and activate other T cells. Now, yung ibang cytotoxic T cells naman po, they would kill cells on contact, all right? So, as you can see right here in this illustration, ko ito yung target cell, no? Ito yung um, cell that has been infected with the obligate intracellular pathogen. Once na magbind or magdikit yung cytotoxic T cell, it would immediately destroy the structure of the target cell. So the target cell would now burst or lice. And right here, we have the triumphant um, cytotoxic T cell. So basically, panalo siya dito sa round na to. Let's now talk about the other types of adaptive immunity, all right? We have what is known as naturally acquired immunity, okay? So when we say naturally acquired immunity, no, um, this is something na um, literal, no, it naturally happened. No? Hindi natin sinasadya na ma-encounter yung antigen, all right? So first up, um, with, with regards to natural immunity, there are also two types of this, all right? So first one is natural active immunity. All right, so natural active immunity, there is natural exposure to the antigens causing the production of antibodies. Natural exposure, meaning, um, for example, no, for example, um, you don't have a cold. Wala kang sipon. 
right? And then um, yung classmate mo or yung seatmate mo, meron siyang sipon, alright? So, humatching siya, no? Wala siyang face mask, ikaw rin wala kang face mask. Humatching yung seatmate or classmate mo na may sipon. Tapos you, you somehow, no, um, inhale some of those particles that they sneezed out. That is a form of natural exposure. Hindi nyo sinasadya yun, di ba? So, ayun, you acquire um, the virus that caused the cold. So, now you would also have the cold. So, that is a natural exposure, all right? Now, for some um, for some infectious pathogens, this could cause lifelong immunity. Not specifically for colds, all right? Um, I would like you to um, keep in mind, no, na may iba't ibang types po ng viruses or iba't ibang um, kumbaga is parang, how do I say this in an easier way to understand? Um, there are different kind of like species of viruses that could cause colds, alright? So, eh, mahira para sa atin na mag-form ng immunity sa mga yun. So, let's look at other um, infectious pathogens. There are a lot of other infectious pathogens out there na kapag na-encounter natin, lifelong na ang immunity or kumbaga is parang, um, Habang buhay na tayong safe, no? Habang buhay na tayong efas sa gantong klaseng mga diseases. So, let's say for example, the mumps virus, right? The mumps virus, the causative agent of mumps, or in Filipino, beke, alright? So, the enlargement of our parotid glands, alright? So, yung enlargement nung, um, kumbaga is yung region dito sa bandang neck area natin. So, mumps or beke in Filipino. Um, once we acquire mumps during our childhood, our immune system would form um, antibodies against that. And when it forms antibodies against that, kahit ma-expose tayo ng paulit-ulit to the mumps virus, hindi na tayo magkakaroon ulit ng beke because we have acquired lifelong immunity. So that's an example no, of a naturally acquired active immunity that has caused lifelong immunity, all right? Next, um, another example of adaptive immunity is um, passive, so natural passive immunity. This is the transfer of antibodies from mother to child, all right? So, an example that was shown here is um, breast milk. So, nabanggit natin kanina, di ba? The presence of IgA, immunoglobulin A, di ba? Um, this can be present in the colostrum from the milk of the mother, all right? So, sa passive naturally acquired immunity, all right, yung mismong antibody galing dun sa mother, yung naipapass on dun sa newborn. So, ayun po, that's an example of a um, naturally acquired pero passive immunity. Pag sinabing passive, no, antibodies na yung na-acquire mo, hindi ka na magpo-produce pa ng antibodies. Dito kasi sa active, na-expose ka sa antigen, so nag-produce ka pa ng sarili mong antibodies. Pero sa passive po, kahit wala kang ma-encounter na antigen, na nakapag-acquire o nakatanggap ka na ng antibodies. So, that's the difference between active and passive. Up next is artificially acquired immunity. So, dito po, sinasadya na natin yung mga pangingyari. Okay? So, ayun po, just to oversimplify, no, the explanations. In naturally acquired immunity, we don't acquire the antigens or antibodies um, purposely. Alright? So, again, hindi natin kumbaga parang sinasadya na na-acquire natin itong mga antigens or antibodies na to. Pero dito sa artificially acquired immunity, sinasadya na po natin na ma-acquire ang mga bagay-bagay. So, first up is active. Alright? So, artificial active immunity. Dito, we are going to be injected with antigens through vaccination, which would cause the production of antibodies, all right? So, again, an example of artificially acquired active immunity is the injection of antigens mula sa vaccines. Um, take, for example, the time that we are being vaccinated for COVID-19, diba? For COVID-19, they may take some of the antigens of the coronavirus, yun po yung i-inject sa inyo, but take note, no, antigens lang ito, hindi na ito yung buong coronavirus causing, um, coronavirus capable of causing pathogenicity, 
character, right? Yung antigen na lang or yung structure na lang na kayang i-recognize ng immune system natin, yung i-inject or i-vaccinate sa atin. So, kapag nakita or pag na-detect ng antibody natin, itong mga antigens na to, kahit hindi naka-attach dito yung buong um, virus that could cause the infection, basta nakita niya yung antigen, magre-react na po agad yung immune system natin. Alright? So, this would now trigger our immune system to produce antibodies. So, that's how vaccinations work. Basically, uh, may expose tayo dun sa antigen, pero hindi tayo magkakasakit. Pero, magtatrabaho na yung immune system natin para gumawa na ng antibodies. So, that next time, na ma-encounter natin in the wild, no? Or um, on the outside, yung actual virus, at least may nakaprepare na tayo na antibodies. Handa na yung immune system natin for the fight. Right? Next is passive immunity, alright? Or artificially acquired passive immunity. Dito po, again, katulad nung na-discuss natin sa previous slide na passive immunity, hindi na tayo gagawa ng sariling antibodies ii inject or mare receive na lang natin yung antibodies all right that's the general idea between active and passive kapag active may expose ka lang dun sa antigen tapos ikaw pa yung gagawa ng sarili mong antibodies pero pag sa passive no hindi ka na i-expose dun sa antigen no you would be given the actual um already prepared antibodies so in this case no this could happen um, that you would be given antibodies from another person or animal. One example of this is rabies vaccinations. All right, so if there's anybody here who's already experienced being bitten by a cat or a dog or being scratched by a rabid animal, di ba ang normal course of action po is lilinisin nyo yung bite wound tapos pupunta kayo sa, um, sa hospital to get your shots, di ba? Your anti-rabies shots. Now, the thing with rabies is that, um, yun nga, medyo matagal bago tayo makapag-produce ng antibodies. So, kailangan unahan na natin. Kailangan mabakunahan na tayo ng antibodies para may antibodies na tayo agad against the rabies virus. Hindi na tayo nagsasayang ng oras na hihintayin pa natin mag-produce ng antibodies and then by that time, it may already be too late. All right. So that's an example of passive immunity. There is an injection of antibodies. Right? So ayun po, wag natin kakalimutan yung mga keywords. Um titingnan po natin yung mga um, terminologies or yung mga statements na naka-highlight dito sa mga slides na to. This flowchart right here just gives us a visual guide on the difference between active and passive immunity, between natural and artificial. But basically, you know, um, this leads to acquired adaptive immunity. So again, I highly suggest po na um, you take a PDF copy of your CLEs. Tapos tignan niyo po itong um, flowchart na ito as you listen to my discussions on the previous slides, all right? So, um, I hope that would help you understand better. If you belong to my lecture classes, that ends our discussion on the lymphatic system and immunity. Thank you so much for listening. But if you belong to my laboratory classes, let's proceed with our discussion on the microscopic anatomy of the different organs of the lymphatic system. This slide right here shows us the difference between the palatine tonsil, pharyngeal tonsil, and lingual tonsil. Um, it is quite rare no, that they would ask us kung ano pang difference nitong mga ito. The most common example that is being shown to us um, is the palatine tonsil. All right? So on the next slide, tignan po natin kung ano yung different parts ng isang palatine tonsil in terms of its microscopic anatomy. This slide right here shows us a low power objective view of the palatine tonsil. So, of course, no, on the surface, no, on the outermost area, we would be able to observe stratified squamous epithelium, no, just um, to serve as some form of, of covering or protection for our palatine tonsil. And then, on the inside, dito na po natin makikita no, yung mga lymph nodules, all right? The lymph nodules where we may be able to find yung mga mature B cells and 
these cells. So as you can see right here, most of the areas are quite dark in terms of their staining. And then the lighter areas, yun po yung mga lymph nodules, yung mga medyo mas light purple yung color. All right. Um, this area or this space right here is referred to as the tonsillar crypt. And right here is just a different photo. All right. So ayun po. Um, medyo iba rin yung itsura ng staining nila dito. But the idea is basically the same. All right. So on the outside, we have a straight stratified squamous epithelium. All right. So dito po sa pinaka surface. Next, this big space right here. This is the tonsillar crypt. And then these lighter staining areas or these kind of like um, circular or irregular shaped patches right here. Yun po yung mga lymph nodules. Now, again, this is still the palatine tonsil. Let's just move to a high power objective view. So, ayan po. Um, again, pinapakitaan lang po kayo ng iba't ibang objective views para po kahit um, anong photo yung ipakita sa inyo, you would be able to still identify the tissues being shown. Again, this is a palatine tonsil. On the outermost area or the surface, we have the stratified squamous epithelium. And then, um, this is what it looks like no, on closer examination of the lymphoid tissues. This slide right here shows us the microscopic anatomy of our lymph nodes, all right? So, um, again, our lymph nodes, now we also have areas that are referred to as the cortex and the medulla, all right? So, again, the cortex is the outermost area and the medulla is the middle or inside or innermost area. Next, we also see um, areas right here no, that are, again, a bit lighter in staining, all right? And then they're kind of like um, circular or sometimes irregular in shape. No, They're also referred to as our lymphatic nodules. Now, zooming in at probably at high power objective, no, um, here we would see the medullary sinus or the open spaces right here. And then we also see the medullary cords or yung mga areas na to kung saan um, parang magkakaduktong or magkakadikit-dikit po yung mga cells ng lymph, um, yung medulla area ng lymph nodes natin. Next here is a low power objective view of our spleen. So diba, our spleen has a white pulp and a red pulp. Yung white pulp po dito yung area wherein it's mostly connected to the arterioles or arteries. As yung red pulp, it's mostly connected to the veins or venules, diba? So ayan po. Um, another thing that we would remember about the red pulp is that it is red because there are a lot of red blood cells in this area. This slide gives us a more zoomed in view of our white pulp versus the red pulp. So again, if you would remember, the, by the white pulp or the light staining area right here, it's mostly composed of lymphoid tissues and um, it's connected to an artery. So as we can see right here, nakaturo din po dito yung central arterial. This photo right here shows us a zoomed in view of our red pulp. So obviously, it's very red because of the presence of RBCs. This photo right here shows us the red pulp of the spleen in high power objective. This next organ is our thymus. Again, our thymus is located behind the sternum in front of our heart. All right. So, ayan po. Again, it has what is known as a cortex and a medulla. So, my um, certain areas din daw po, no, that is referred to as the outside or yung cortex and the inside or the medulla. Here's another photo with a different appearance in terms of staining. Pero ganun din po, yung cortex outside, yung inside or yung middle ay medulla. Mas dark yung itsura ng cortex, mas light yung itsura ng medulla. This slide right here probably shows us an oil power immersion objective view of the thymus cortex and the 
mid dollar. So right here, medyo mas maintindihan po natin kung bakit mas dark yung itsura ng thymic cortex versus ng thymic medulla. Yung mga mismong cells ng thymic cortex that make up the cortex is very darkly staining. Diba po? In comparison to the thymic medulla, which um, a lot of components right here are very light in terms of the stain that we're seeing. This slide right here shows us three different lymphocytes, so a small, medium, and large lymphocyte. Um, it's quite difficult to tell apart the small and medium lymphocyte, all right? Um, in terms of size, the small lymphocyte po halos ka size na niya yung isang RBC. Ganon siya kaliit, halos magkasing laki lang sila ng isang RBC. Um, with regards to the medium lymphocyte, we could definitely tell that it is much larger in comparison to an RBC. But with this one, now that we're looking at a large lymphocyte, uh, very obvious, no? Talagang mas malaki siya in comparison to the RBCs around it. Another thing that we may be able to notice is that nakikita na natin yung cytoplasm sa paligid ng large lymphocyte. Something that we might not be able to see in the first two lymphocytes. Dito po, um, although obviously no, sobrang laki pa rin nung um, nucleus niya, it still covers a great portion of the cell. We're already seeing these lighter staining areas here at the sides, which shows us a bit of the cytoplasm of the large lymphocyte. And this slide right here shows us different appearances of plasma cells. So, nabangit natin kanina, di ba? A B cell needs to first evolve into a plasma cell before it's capable of producing antibodies. So, as we can see right here, ganito po yung itsura ng mga plasma cells. Alright? So, um, medyo nag-expand na po, no? Yung cytoplasm niya. Alright? Although malaki pa rin yung um, nucleus, no? Definitely, no, there's increase in size in the cytoplasm, as we can see right here in these examples. That ends our discussion on the lymphatic system and immunity. I am Aurel Enriquez. Thank you so much for listening.